All right, welcome to the next installment of our software engineering lecture. Today um, I'd like to talk about two related topics, which are um, error handling and debugging. So first of all, let's talk a bit about error handling and specifically how to use exceptions for error handling. The um, fundamental idea is to have a better structured code for error handling, less kind of spaghetti code with code smells like we talked about earlier. Um, the examples I'm showing you now are in C and C++, but they are just as well transferable to Java, Python, doesn't really matter. And the fundamental idea behind exceptions that uh, is that if you want to report an error, then you throw an exception. And if you want to handle an error, then you catch the exception again. All right, but now let's look at the background. So um, historically, of course, um, one of the earliest uh, high-level programming languages was, was C. And C is still used quite a lot today. For example, the entire Linux kernel is written in C. And um, let's say you have a function here, process files, that in which you want to open three files and do something with the contents of that file. And you need all three of them. So you can, in C, um, of course, open them in order. And every time you opened one of the files, you need to check for the return value. And if that's, um, that's null, for example, that means that uh, the function failed. And then you can return a global variable which is called error number ERRNO, which contains the last error that was caused by a library function, for example. So this is really quite convoluted. Um, and if you have, uh, if the error occurs on the second file, for example, then you would actually need to take care to clean up the first file again, close it, and then return the error, and so on. Um, for the third one, then you need to close first and second, uh, etc. So this is really kind of uh, convoluted and quite messy. Um, and therefore, also one of the reasons why C code often is, is a, little, uh, a little hard to read and, and also error prone. All right. Um, there's a slightly different approach, which you can also use in C, which is actually using GoTo. Um, GoTo is actually rarely used because there was an important essay from 1968, which basically um, uh, stated that GoTo is considered harmful because uh, it's generally making the code even harder to, to understand. Um, however, there's maybe one exception, which is this error handling structure, which is uh, actually what the, the Linux kernel, for example, uses because it has to be written in C for various reasons, but it's still uh, trying to, to have, of course, understandable and maintainable code. So what's going on here is that um, depending on which file fails, you go either to the label error one, two, or three. And the important part about this go to instruction C is that the um, execution of the code will simply continue downwards from the label you jump to. So if you go to error three, then all three of these statements will be executed. If you go to error two, then only the second and third will be executed. And for error one, of course, only the last one. But it's a little better to understand what's actually going on here. And uh, just the order of the uh, labels, for example, is maybe a little, a little backwards, but still it's, probably the best way to handle this sort of um, multiple potential errors and cleanup code in C. Of course, um, C is kind of outdated by now. Um, we have C++ for a long time. And C++ being object oriented now gives us a better approach to do that uh, in general. Um, for example, because all local objects which I create inside uh, a function, just as in Java, are actually destroyed automatically when the scope, uh, so the uh, the outer function basically ends. And therefore, if these file objects, for example, which I'm using here now, these file classes have a prob probably um, properly, I'm sorry, implemented a destructor uh, cleanup code, then they will clean up after themselves, basically, if uh, when the function ends. 
Um, so then you can just create uh, each each object in turn, and if one of them is invalid, then you can just return from your function with an error code and basically be done because all objects that have been created up to this point will automatically actually be destroyed again. This works in C++ as well as in Java. The one big difference is that uh, if you don't have local objects that are only in the inside the scope of the function, um, then it gets a lot more difficult because uh, they would not get automatically deleted um, in C++. And so the uh, kind of proper solution, which just about any modern program programming language actually uses is to have uh, some structure that's usually summarized as try and catch blocks. So first of all I have a try block from here to here in which I just create the three objects I need to re read in my data and when I arrive at this point I can assume that all three have been created successfully and I can actually process the data. And whenever something happens in here, then um, uh, the exception uh, that's going to be thrown will abort the try block and will then jump to the catch block. And here I can simply um, basically get the exception object as a parameter to that kind of implicit catch function and then for example display ex the exact error message that uh, the individual um, the individual exception carries along with it. Um, it's also important to keep in mind that um, these objects of course are again local objects within that block so whenever one of them fails, let's say input 3 fails, then um, it will exit the current scope and that also means that input 1 and input 2 will be prob probably cleaned up um, and the uh, exception from input 3 will then be processed in the catch block. So this is kind of the straightforward approach uh, to, to handling errors. Um, if you uh, have more complex uh, needs then you can also have multiple catch blocks for different types of errors. This is again also possible in Java. Um, so you can for example just throw uh, literal values, you can uh, throw errors that are derived from one of the standard error classes. Um, in Java you can uh, throw anything that's a subclass of uh, java.lang.throwable and one uh, already defined subclass of throwable is runtime exception. So you can of course create your, your own uh, subclasses of runtime exception for example if you have very specific errors that you want to handle properly in your probably in your code um, then you can of course define your own subclasses that you can um, can then throw and also which you can then write specific catch blocks for. Um, one very important aspect uh, is that exceptions uh, kind of get get passed upwards through the the call chain until eventually somebody uh, somebody catches them. So let's say that you have a function throw some, something that doesn't have a try catch block but still throws an exception and then if uh, you put this function inside a try block then the exception will end up in this try block even if it was thrown in a in a function that's basically lower down in the in the call chain exactly the same thing again applies to java in java you sometimes or in most cases actually have to declare that a specific function can throw a specific type of error but otherwise the behavior is exactly the same thing um, and one thing we already talked about, which might sometimes be necessary, but is something you should use with caution, is some sort of catch all uh, clause. Um, something like this here, which just uh, uh, gives a message of, hey, I'm the default exception handler. And 
of course this is not a very good idea because it will not tell you anything about the actual error it's much uh, much more helpful to at the very least uh, print out uh, a message relating to what the error already is but in some in some use cases of course you can still use this uh, this so-called catch all clause and in java this would be just catch exception ex so anything that's uh, derived from the from the upper class uh, exception all right